Beckwith. I'm sitting on my porch with uh, Shackleton the Explorer in one of these uh, circular uh, trampoline uh, type chairs. Super comfortable, very, very lightweight. You can bring them anywhere. And it's pouring outside, which is sort of a, a good backdrop to what I'm going to talk about. So in this video, I'm going to talk all about the biblical flood that will drown California. Not that might drown California, but that will drown California with better than even odds uh, before 2060. So actually the risks of this flood, this mega flood, are even greater than the risks of a massive earthquake in California. So let me get you, give you a little bit of background history. Um, there'll be other videos to follow this one, but I'm talking about an article that appeared in Wired recently of the, that name, The Biblical Flood That Will Drown California by um, uh, Tom uh, Philpot is the, the author. So in 1861, November 1861 in California, it started raining. It, well, first it, there was snow, about 10 to 15 feet of snow in the Sierra Nevadas. And then there was, um, it rained for essentially 45 days. It caused the greatest natural disaster known to have befallen the Western United States since the European um, contact in the 16th century. The Great Flood of 1861 to 1862. It submerged the entire Central Valley of California under as much as 15 feet of water. So people are concerned about earthquakes, obviously fires and mega droughts in California, but what about mega floods? The frequency of occurrence of the 1861-62 event was initially thought to be one in a thousand, but emerging science has shown that these floods, that floods even bigger are expected every 100 to 200 years. And in fact, in the, in the 1800 years prior to 1862, there were six floods that were much, much larger than the 1861 and 1862 event. Um, and a few, three or so of about the same intensity. So, and climate change, um, is making them more frequent. In fact, about three times more frequent. So instead of them occurring every 100 to 200 years, they now are expected to occur every 35 to 65 years or so. So 1861 to 1862 was a preview. California agriculture and economic power will be devastated when such a flood occurs. Um, and again, the odds are greater than even um, in the next, uh, say, 30, 40 years. So in November of 1861, there was a continuous rain for about 10 weeks or so. So 45 days, almost 50 days. All roads were impassable in the middle of the state. The telegraph connection to the East Coast was completely cut off the tops of the poles were underwater. Sacramento in the center, which was the capital of the fledgling state, was under 15 feet of water. In a normal year, San Francisco gets about 20 inches of rain. In the 10 weeks prior to January 18, 1862, there was 33 inches or almost three feet of rain. So in a normal year with 20 inches, you know, a fifth of a year um, with 50, 52 weeks would be about four inches, and there was 33 inches, um, or almost three feet. So the Central Valley of California basically got flooded out in this event. Now, the Central California, the Central Valley of California is the jewel of, US, uh, of the U.S. farm system. It's 450 miles long, 50 miles wide on average, 18,000 square miles or 11.5 million acres. It's uh, bordered by the Sierra Nevada mountains to the east and the coastal ranges to the west. 
It's extremely fertile soil and temperate climate. So it's the globe's greatest um, uh, site for expanse or site for growing food. Almost all U.S. almonds, walnuts, pistachios come from the Central Valley in California today. Greater than 90% of broccoli, carrots, garlic, celery, grapes, tangerines, and artichokes come from there today. Greater than 75% of cauliflower, apricots, lemons, strawberries, and raspberries in the U.S. come from the Central Valley. And over 40% of the lettuce, cabbage, oranges, peaches, peppers come from there. It's a, it's a, it's a national hub for milk production with greater than 20% of U.S. milk supply from the dairy cows there. $46 billion a year. Agriculture, which is double that of Iowa, which is the behemoth, behemoth for corn and soybean. And remember the, the Duresho straight line winds that went through and devastated parts of that, those crops. We can, there, there's frequent and severe droughts. And in fact, from 2011 to 2017, there was a severe drought, but the rains in 2016, 2017 ended that drought. Of course, we've had the huge and terrible fires 2018 in paradise, think of that town. This year in 2020, the LNU Lightning Complex fire, destroying many, many structures. And of course, people are very concerned about earthquakes. Floods don't have the same buzz in California. But the Central Valley is as important to eaters as Hollywood is to moviegoers and Silicon Valley is to smartphone users. Now, some might argue that smartphones are more essential than eating, but I would argue that eating, I'm an eater. You know, everybody's an eater. Okay, so what happened in 1861 to 62? There was a dry spell in California for the two decades prior. Okay, prior to the 1861 to 62 flood. I don't think my cat is going to take off anywhere because it's raining still heavily and he doesn't like the water so much. Although he likes going like this under the tap. Don't go away. I'll, never, I'll have to go chase him if he does. Come on. Very curious cat, Shackleton, the explorer. There was 10 to 15 feet of snow on the Sierra Nevadas um, at the end of 1861 in the winter. Then there was 45 days of rain, rain on snow. So the water just went down the river system into the Central Valley and basically kept going and on and on and on until Sacramento was under 15 feet of water. A lake larger than Lake Superior was created there in the Central Valley. The indigenous people left. When it started raining, they knew what was coming and they left. They, they, they took off. They hightailed it out of there. They knew from uh, spoken word passed down over many generations that the rains were coming big time. There were thousands of people died in 1861 to 62. One third of the state, um, uh, one third of the state's property was destroyed. One home in eight was destroyed in the state. It wiped out the Mexican rancheros who owned a lot of the land, farming land. It was deeded to them with the formation of the new state of California. They got U.S. citizenship. The, it's it's a, an exact, a perfect example of Naomi uh, Klein's uh, disaster capitalism. They lost their homes, land, and livelihoods for pennies on the dollar. In 1861 to 62, there were 500,000 people in California. Now there's over, you know, thir what, 40 million or so? 6.5 million in the Central Valley alone. Sacramento, Fresno, and Bakersfield are huge growing regions. These would all be submerged by uh, a repeat of the 1861 to 62 event. Now, California also often gets mega droughts, decade long arid stretches. Um, so deep core samples of riverbeds show that the 1861 to 62 flood was no one of, 
There were many floods even worse in the sediment records. So 12, eight, sometime between 1285 to 1360, also between 1395 and 1410, there was an event. 1555 to 1615, another event. That's sort of the time spread. We know the event occurred within then. 1750 to 1770, 1810 to 1820, and 1861 to 1862. So there were six events in the 1800 years prior to 1861-1862 where the, the mega flood was even larger than the 1861 event. Now why do these things happen? In California we call it the Pineapple Express, but more generally it's wind-driven plumes of water vapor. They're about a mile above the ocean, um, about 1.6 kilometers above the ocean. They bring um, moisture from warm areas near the equator to in the northeast direction towards um, the um, towards the um, away from the equator um, they have 25 times the flow of the mississippi river there's about five or six filaments in each of the northern and southern hemisphere they're thousands of miles long um, greater than 80 percent of california flooding and 81% of the 128 documented levee failures in California have been from atmospheric um, uh, river events. Okay, before climate change, the climate change era, they happened every 100 to 200 years. With climate change, the frequency is up three times more. So that's every 35 to 65 years. So more likely than not, we will have one of these massive mega floods in California uh, uh, by, uh, you know, in the next 30 or 40 years. There's 8 to 10 atmospheric rivers per year roughly hitting California. 30 to 50 percent of the state's rain and snow is from atmospheric rivers. And again, the previous, in the previous 1800 years to 1862, six events were more severe than the 1862 event three about the same magnitude it's more likely than a massive earthquake and the damages will far exceed that of a massive earthquake so there's a modeling simulation that was done called arc storm a r stands for atmospheric river the k in arc is is k is a thousand years um, and a storm so they modeled only 25 days of of uh rain uh, of course, there were 45 in 1861 to 62, but even from that model, even from a, so a storm of less magnitude than the great uh, storm, great flood of 1861 to 62, the estimate, estimated damages from the model, $725 billion. Um, that's four times the uh, 7.8, uh, earthquake scenario that was modeled. Katrina in 2005 was a $166 billion event. Harvey in 2017 was a $130 billion event, but we're talking $725 billion uh, for this event. A quarter of the state's buildings would be damaged, 10 to 20 feet of water over the Central Valley. There's 4 billion beef and dairy cattle there, the pollution, the carcasses rotting, etc. We'd get soil polluted for many years after the event, groundwater pollution, the pesticides there, the oil there, for example, Kern in the southern part of the California Valley. 70% of California's oil production is there. Um, and just recently, you know, much smaller floods, like in February of 2017, the Oroville Dam nearly failed. And if that dam had failed, there would have been a 30-foot wall of water gushing into the Central Valley. So the Central Valley of California, it's an agricultural gem. It's 1% of the agricultural land in the U.S. is in the Central Valley, okay? And it's about 25% of the U.S. agricultural production. So it, it, it's, this isn't rocket science, people. The U.S. food supply is extremely vulnerable to such a catastrophic 
mega, mega flood. Thank you for listening.